Got a lot of questions, I'm sure. We'll start from Cape Cod. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, uh, what's the status with Logan Diggs and for this game? I would say he's doubtful. He's doubtful. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I guess uh, this week, how has Jaden sort of handled, I guess, some of the extra attention that's come on to him with any of this Heisman hype? I think he's had a lot of attention all year. Um, you know, we ha we've had a um, Amazon crew in here most of the year doing a documentary. Um, and, you know, so we've had cameras around most of the year. So he's used to the distractions. He does a great job of, you know, keeping them at bay. Um, and, and so I think he's done a great job, really, all year in terms of making the important things important um, and, and, and preparing himself. Um, as I mentioned, he's... He's in here early in the morning, gets his work done, and and then you know when he gets to practice, he's he's locked in. He's he's uh, he's been he's been really professional. Speaking of Jaden, how does he separate from Michael Penix and Bo Nix in the Heisman race? Well, I mean, I I think you you first of all look at uh, what his versatility is. Um, Certainly nobody runs the way he can. Um, his ability to uh, throw the ball down the field, big plays, I think um, nobody is, is close to him in terms of, um, you know, uh, 20 plus yards or more in terms of big plays. He's a, he's a guy that, that um, takes the energy out of the opposition in the way he he plays at that quarterback position. Um, he changes the momentum in the game. If there's momentum against you, he brings it right back to you with striking for big plays. Um, and, and that's the mark of a game changer. Um, so all those guys are great players. Um, they really are, and, and they're having terrific seasons. But nobody um, single-handedly has been um, as electric and has been um, – the kind of game changer um, that that he has been. Um, Malik is within spit and distance, I guess, of the all-time receiving yards record here for the program. Just what do you think that would mean for you guys as a program that you're trying to build here if he was able to kind of set that in, in the next couple of weeks? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, all those records are, are certainly um, pieces that, that go to building the consistency that, that you're looking for in your program. And, and certainly what we're looking for is, is at LSU a prolific offense, one that can be a standard in which we can recruit to. Um, so those are important pieces. Uh, I wouldn't say they're the most important things uh, in our program, but, but they certainly help get the attention of uh, the group that we're recruiting. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we've, we've made a, a, a dent in, in the, um, I'd say, the country relative to the kind of offense that we're running and the recruiting is, has followed. So I think we've made an important uh, inroad in these last couple of years in terms of what we're doing. Hey, Coach, up in the second row. Yeah. Uh, with it being late in the season, I'm just curious maybe about some of the unheralded guys we haven't talked or heard about much this year that have surprised you with how much they've improved from the start of the season to now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I could probably, you know, start with uh, Jaden Daniels. You know, I think we, we get kind of lost in, in just his, his rise and his development. Um, as a quarterback, I don't know that anybody had him pegged for a Heisman, you know, a leading Heisman trophy candidate. Um, I think his has been outstanding. Brian Thomas has been uh, another one that I could point to. I think Garrett Dellinger's had a great year on the offensive line. Um, I would say from a defensive line standpoint, um, Jacoby and Guillory is, is really, um, you know, progressed from a defensive standpoint. 
Um, you know, I think Greg Penn um, has been really solid for us from a defensive standpoint, and we've seen improvement from week to week. Um, you know, I, I, I think you know, you'd have to put um, Sage Ryan in there. You know, here's a guy that we've asked to play multiple positions, and, um, you know, at times, you know, that's difficult, but, I mean, I think his resilience has been really good, and, and we've seen a steady in incline in terms of his play. So I'd say I, I probably – and there's many more. I mean, I, I'm, I'm leaving out, you know, a lot of guys that, that – you know, Mason Smith the last few weeks has been really good. Um, and I'm going to leave out somebody, which these are tough questions because you, you know, you forget somebody that's, that's doing a nice job. But that, that's just to name a few, and I'm sure I forgot some. Hey, Coach, first of all, any other injuries to report? Anyone else on the injury report this week? No. Okay. Do you well, want somebody else on the? No, I was just really curious. Just wanted to see if we missed anybody. I guess I guess he doesn't trust you that you know your injury report. I mean, we got to we got to follow up on the injury. I uh, just wanted to make sure you didn't leave. You know, I I I understand. Mm -hmm. um, no, but there we're not we're not hiding anybody on the injury report. I also wanted to ask. Um, we haven't asked you a ton about Brian Thomas, so mm. I'm, I'm wondering if. Um, have you noticed maybe a change in his mindset or his demeanor from last year to this year? Hundred percent. Anything changed about him to allow him to have such a big year? Absolutely. Um, everything. Um, focused. Um, attention to detail. Um, doing a great job in the classroom. Um, I would say that uh, it's a Brian Thomas that that is reflected in the way he's playing. Um, blocking downfield, catching the ball, all that is a product of him um, taking care of all the, the little things in his life on a day-to-day -day basis. Proud of, of, of his growth and his maturity. And um, it's all because of Malik Neighbors, right? You know, No, I'm kidding, right? That, we have this standing joke, uh, Brian, all your success is because of Malik. So I don't know, you know. Uh, he's earned all of it. Um, and, and it started with, you know, his, his focus and determination in the classroom and doing the little things the right way and being early for everything. It was a choice. He, he wanted to be elite. He made that choice and, and really proud of him. So, you know, anything's possible, but the 14 playoff is looking unlikely at this point. But say you're in this same situation right now next year when it's a 12-team playoff. Um, and you kind of still have an opportunity to crack the field. Are you looking forward to being in that kind of a situation? Should you, you know, be in that situation next year, or are you more of a fan of the 14th? Yeah, we expect to, we expect to be there. Um, that's why we're here at LSU, you know, to be part of, um, you know, championship play and, and postseason play, if you will. Um, I'm a fan of 12 teams. Um, I always have been. You know, I started my career in – Division two, where we had 16, now it's 32. Um, it's exciting. I mean, you know, whether you're on campus or you're hosting or, you're, you know, you're not, uh, I just think it's going to be great for college football. And, you know, who knows right now if we're in this position, I think, what, we're 15th. You know, maybe we get a little help and, and we slide in. So uh, that would make it exciting, right, for everybody in college football that, you know, the top 15, 16 teams are still fighting, you know, for an opportunity for postseason. So I think this is going to be exciting. Um, you know, we still have some work to do this year. Um, you know, our, our goal is obviously, you know, as I talk to our football team, look, everybody remembers about how you finish. And, and for us, it's about finishing strong and finish the season strong. Um, and, and that's what our focus is right now. Coach, over here. Um, when you talk about the retention piece year to year of yeah. the roster, how much of that do you view as sort of day to day doing things the right way and making sure that the guys are where they need to be mentally versus more explicit conversations? And when does that kind of ramp up? Is that after a yeah. or does that start already? Well, that's a good question um, because there are different pieces to that. Right. Um, 
you know, last year it was acquisition over retention. Um, and this year it's going to be retention over acquisition. Um, so retention um, begins with um, certainly developing a program where players thrive within your culture. And, and so retention is their want and desire to be there. Um, and, and then you have to add, um, you know, certainly uh, opportunities like um, I can develop here. Um, I can see myself, um, you know, playing here and developing to where I could maybe take this game to the next level. Um, you have to look at NIL opportunities as, as a piece of that retention. So all of those now have to be part of, you know, a, a, bigger, a, a bigger vision uh, as it relates to retention. Uh, and then development, right? You, you want to develop your players, your younger players, your freshman class. Um, we weren't in that position. Last year it was a heavy acquisition. Um, it was freshman recruiting and, and then retention. Retention is goal one now um, in year two for us. Player development um, and then acquisition through, through the transfer portal. Speaking about looking into your third year, statistically, in every team that you've coached, you've made a huge jump in your third year. With being at LSU and you spoke about recruiting and retention, what do you think that means looking into your third year and what that means for you now? Well, the third, the third year, wherever I've been, um, is, is probably a comfort level where everybody from the night cr cleaning crew here to um, – you know, the, the freshman that's, that's in the program for six months to the transfer student, everybody knows what the standard is. And, and so, you know, that creates a synergy within your program that everybody's pulling in the same direction. Um, there's no need to be uh, slowed down by um, some that are, that are not on the same page. Everybody's working in the same direction, and we're getting really close to that. Um, you know, finishing up this year. As we go into the off season, there'll be great momentum going into year three. Um, a, lot, a lot of bowl projections. Have you, LSU maybe playing Notre Dame in a, in a bowl game. You have any thoughts on that one way or another? That, that possible match? Should be great for the media. Um, oh, you guys will, no. will well, have Well, that's the most important, but yes. Yeah. It'll be great. It'll be great for you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, I, I hope that we, we get uh, a, a bowl matchup that um, everybody's excited about. Um, but, you know, my focus right now is on Georgia State. And, um, you know, we got to play up to a standard to a team that um, has always risen up to the competition. Uh, Georgia State plays up. You know, they had that great win against Tennessee a few years back. Um, they played North Carolina tough. So, you know, this is a program builder for them. Um, so my focus has been on Georgia State. Great. All right. Thank you.